I find myself quite often going back to the same ideas, same thoughts, same cascades of thinking, uh, revisiting very familiar ideas. And it feels like each time I come back to a certain idea, it's almost like I dig a little bit deeper and seek a little bit more understanding. Um, I remember even back in the day when I was studying, you know, sitting down and studying one topic for a billion hours in a row was always very hard work for me. But if I broke it up and I did a bit of chemistry, then I walked off, did a bit of biology, then I sh shot some hoops in the backyard and then played a video game, come back. You know, I find myself, if I do that, like I, I, you know, it's almost like I stay fresher and it's like a mind cleanser, palate cleanser, you know, and, and I feel like my ideas, my thoughts, my thinking about squatting, deadlifting, you know, getting stronger, it follows a similar pattern where I find myself coming back to similar ideas. And uh, this morning, again, you know, I pulled up the same freaking videos of Louis Simmons talking about his business, you know, the squat, the box squat, you know, the, the West Side Barbell Boys and all that stuff. Man, I swear, some of these videos I've seen in excess of 20 times, same ideas, you know. I, I remember the first time I got exposed to Louis Simmons, I found him very hard to understand, like the way he speaks, the way he carries himself the way the way his ideas come together he's it's almost like he's speaking about you know to him very very simple ideas but to you know fresh eyes fresh ears you know somebody that's nowhere near the experience level as him it's like these ideas that he drops are, are, are huge and very hard to digest and you know, then he moves on quickly to another thing it becomes overwhelming very quickly but this morning again um i revisited the same old videos about box squatting and it, like I said, the, the cascade of thinking that led this down this path was the pin squats. You know, yesterday I did deadlifts, today I was playing to do pin squats and I'm trying to do pin squats every other day, you know, and, and then I started thinking about my squat rack and how it's uneven. I thought, well, maybe I should do some box squats instead. And last time, a few days ago, I did box squats. It was quite hard. I didn't really like the the, the, the feeling of that. It felt all right, but I was wondering, could I could I go lower and how low is low? And then... You know, go on, you know, Google, you type in box squats and, you know, at least my cookie history, my cookies on the internet always lead me back to Louis Simmons. And so I started, you know, watching this seminar, like a 42 minute seminar of him talking about box squatting and chains and bands and all that stuff. And and then I found myself, you know, thinking about that. And, and then the spark for today's session was when he said that he used to squat on milk crates back in the day when he was like, whatever, 16, 17 years old, he went from a 410 squat to a, I forget now, a, a, a 460 in six months or something like that. He stopped free squatting altogether and just started box squatting. He was using like a shoulder width initially. And then later on, he worked out that it was much more beneficial to go wider, to engage the glutes and the hamstrings a bit more. And and then that kind of sparked me. I, you know, the, the one thing I don't like about box squatting is when it's really high. And then I was like, why don't I like that? Like, I'm a fan of pin squats, very high pin squats. What's the difference? So I started challenging my ideas there, like some of these thoughts that I've kind of concluded in my mind in concrete. You know, I started challenging myself. Okay, so why don't you like box squats? You like pin squats. What's the difference? Um, and so then I, you know, started exploring that idea. And basically, I found myself today doing very low... Uh, box squats so uh, i tried you know i went on and after the video i read an article by louis on this and he basically said you know if you're doing max effort uh you should go what was it eight to ten inches uh box uh if you're doing dynamic effort i might be getting this wrong if you're doing dynamic effort you should go higher like 12 inches or something like that so I set it up to eight, uh, these blocks that I have, and I found it way too low for me. Like it was basically, maybe I'm too tall. I don't know what it is, but I was kind of losing the tightness in my lower back. And so I went up to 10 inches. So what you're seeing here is 10 inches box squat. Um, I'm probably rusty. I'm sure if Louis was there, he would be saying you shouldn't be rocking, you know, forward like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I, you know, I'm not very good at it yet, but I, I think that the the takeaway with box squatting is that it, it does break the eccentric concentric portions and it, and, and it makes you produce power from absolute ground zero. It makes you engage the hip flexes. And I was very, very happy about that. I started feeling my hip flexes as though I was doing, you know, high knees and, and you know, leg raises and hanging leg raises. Um, 
And I, I was I was humbled, man. I could not believe how heavy 100 kilos was for me. Now, I don't know exactly whether people are stronger in box squats than free squats. I guess it depends, you know, you know, it depends on the freaking heart of the box, right? Like, if you're doing a really high, super high box, I, I guess I could be squatting 220 or something like this. But if you're doing an ATG type thing, like, you know, uh, really low, like a 10-inch or 8-inch box, I would imagine that it's very, very uh, much, much more difficult than a free squat because there's no stretch reflex and it's, it's very taxing. Um, so Louis, Louis recommends doing doubles, you know, work up to a way that you can kind of do doubles with. Um, and he, he, he said in one of the videos, he, you know, often has done like 12 doubles, you know, working up to that 25 rep, total rep range. Thought about that and uh, I thought I'm quite new to this. So I don't want to load the weight yet. Uh, so I decided let's just go five by five. Ended up doing five. And then I thought I still want to do more. And in fact, I, for this session, I plan to do front squats afterwards, free squats. But I was enjoying this so much, I ended up doing another five sets. So I did 10 sets of, of five with 100 kilos. And, you know, one thing that I've taken away from it is that my lower back is fried. Uh my hip flexes are very much, you know, fatigued. Uh, I think the lower back is fried from, from yesterday as well, that 260 pull. Uh, I have not pulled anything that heavy quite some time. So I've got a bit of fatigue there. Um, but the box squats are, are feeling really good. I keep thinking about, you know, Louis' experience when he was a 17-year-old. He you said six months I didn't do free squats. I just did, I just did back squats. Um, uh, sorry, I did box squats. And uh, put on, you know... 50 pounds man you know on the on, on the squat which is what's that 20 25 kilos something like this that's impressive man that, that that's a lot of weight now obviously he's a 17 year old there could be many factors associated with that maybe a growth spurt maybe you know the hormones 17 years old you know he was out of the army i think or something like this uh but i can see that you know this version of squatting is much more difficult than normal and so if you acclimatize yourself to something that's more difficult than normal when you go back to the normal you're going to find it a bit easier that's kind of common sense and that's consistent with my experience with various different things um it's kind of like in the basketball days if you if you're scrimmaging really well if you're scrimmaging really really hard against your teammates and in situations you know you're drilling different things when you go to the game it's going to be easier for you when you're used to that particular scenario so um that makes sense to me um 10 sets is a lot, man. That's 50 total reps. Uh, but it's very, very difficult. Obviously, there's a you know great difficulty with me kind of halfway up in the squat. Uh, so Louis basically recommends going just below parallel. I went just below below parallel. So I went quite low. Um, although every time I see, you know, Louis and the boys, you know, some of those videos, they're quite high. Um, now, the interesting thing is, yeah, and Louis says this the same thing. Is it's if you if you watch where, where people you know fail their squats, it's not in the ATG. You know, if you're watching people you know squatting ATG like Olympic weightlifting or whatever, where people fail is around parallel or just above parallel. They kind of lose speed and fail there. So it kind of makes sense to me as well to think, okay, let's put the box there. Let's start from the worst possible point. Um, I guess the difference now that I'm that I'm thinking, you know between pin squats and box squats is that box squats allow you to still have the weight on you and it allows you to completely sit and it, and it continues that you know that core engagement it continues that hip flexor engagement the psoas iliacus all of the you know core muscles are engaged and then you kind of send your legs to work again uh, whereas pin squats once that weight is on the pins you're basically nothing is working anymore it's completely off so I think that's where a benefit could lie. Uh, there's more time under tension, let's say, you know, through the core. Uh, so anyway, I had a lot of fun today. And right now, as I'm speaking to you guys, man, I'm thinking to myself, I want to go back and do a couple more sets, but I won't. I won't. 10 cents is a lot. Um, am I going to be sore tomorrow? I'm not sure. The other good thing that I, I already mentioned this. I find it so freaking good when you find an exercise that is very specific to your exercise that is so freaking hard, man. It's so freaking refreshing. It's so nice to know you don't have to fight 180 all the time, 160 all the time, 200 all the time. I'm doing two plates. When I was unracking these weights, I was like, this is light ass, man. 
But then you sit on the box and you're like, Jesus, this is difficult to get going again. Um, it's almost like weakness found moment. You know what I mean? Anyway, that was my day. I have not done one of these in a very long time where I just literally come in, do one exercise and I leave. That has not happened in a very long time. But today I did it with box squats. Um, tomorrow I've got a night shift and whatnot. So I might just come back and do this for the next few days. I don't know. I have to think about it. Tonight when I get a free second, I'll, I'll continue to you know, listen to Louis and some of these ideas. Um, it's just interesting how we are so cyclical, man. Biology is cyclical. Our hormones are cyclical. Our days are cyclical. The freaking universe is cyclical. The earth, we're all kind of going through space. It's all very, it's almost like very repetitive. And I wish I could put my thoughts on a graph to see how cyclical is cyclical. You know what I mean? Like how often, it, so, you know, this little idea about Louis and, you know, I've thought about Louis and his methods many, many times before, but this time I reckon I've gone a level deeper in understanding. It's so interesting how you could have somebody teach you everything, you know, with one, one particular instance, one exposure, but you could have that same chat over and over again. It's kind of like that idea you read the same book a hundred times. And on the hundredth time, you're going to get something different out of it, man. Isn't that amazing? I find that so freaking amazing. Anyway. That's what I did today. Appreciate all of you guys on Patreon. Special thanks to the guys on the screen as always. Uh, Discord, Instagram, the comments on YouTube. Appreciate you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.